Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I made longer content for this channel. I was tied up with work and school, but now I'm back to create more stuff for you guys to watch. Without further ado, let's check out some news and announcement from KL Server. They're planning to update some more mod skills for all four path characters throughout April to May. I guess we can also expect an update to the synergy system for these characters as well. And in June, they are introducing a system similar to marriage system that has no character restrictions. Does that mean gay marriage is finally coming to this game? Or just a best friend kind of system? We will see. They are also gonna merge servers within the KL server. But it won't impact the global servers. So we don't have to pay too much attention about it. Well, let me make a small prediction too. Since Elsword normally launches a new character every two years. And 2022 was during COVID and packed with four paths. Does that mean a new character is about to announce at the end of this year? I guess we will just have to wait and see. With the last four paths released on KR, I guess it's time for pulling down the curtain for the Cold War. And I did love to share my thoughts on all four paths based on their design, lore, and actual gameplay. More importantly, I want to see who is your favorite four path. That's why I have set up a poll for your favorite four path on my Discord channel and YouTube community. Hmm, how to make this four path recap more entertaining? Let's reveal the result while recapping them. Sounds fun, eh? But before we start, feel free to guess your result on your own and comment down below. Share your thought on which one is your favorite four path in the comment sections. Also, make sure to check out my Instagram and join the Discord. And of course, subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out when there is new updates and new community events. Okay, let's start with the 14th. Oh PR. Poor PR. I actually like her design a lot. A bard class in MMORPG? Hell yeah. Where her lore is fun. She can access to the knowledge from the past and future by studying the elf language. Pretty cool. But her in-game performance is where the disappointment hits. Instead of a typical healer tier bard class, she's somewhat a sub DPS class with party buffs. And her RNG effects rolling thingy is bothering me so hard. I mean, doesn't the game already have RNG stuff on rolling lines with equipments? Pretty tired with RNG already. If the RNG effects of hers were decent, maybe it would be worth it. But in fact, it's not really a game changing one. Well, in general, I understand why she ended up here. 13. OM. If you dive into his lore, you will discover that he is a true villain. Treating people not with kindness, but as a means to collect all of the data from mankind and manipulate it for his own purpose. What an abusive doctor. Overmind indeed. His support ability is decent as well. With global heal, many party buffs, and supercharging a targeted ally. Although his damage for general cooling is lacking a bit, I still think he is decent. Maybe it's just a matter of popularity. But in my opinion, OM is a well-designed class. 12. LA. Hmm, I didn't expect to see her here. Her in-game performance is nice. Decent party buffer for both physical and magical parties. Re-clearing and damaging for dailies. Quite versatile support. And her flask thingy is fun to play with. Well, her lore isn't too standing out. Studying from alchemy and hoping to find it internally truth. Well, again, maybe it's just a matter of popularity. She's quite satisfied to play with. 11th. AD. I was expecting an all out DPS class like her brother Genesis with the power of L Lady. But then, she's a sub DPS class. And her story isn't really that interesting. She was just using her power of L and fight against the destiny of being a L Lady. In game wise, she's a sub DPS class with magical attacking buffs. But I saw her doing fairly high damage in the game as well. So I guess her in-game performance is decent. Well, I heard she is a class that requires high ERP in order to be good. But in my early to mid-game experience, I think she did great. 
so I give this class a nice thumbs up. 10th to 7th place. They are all standing very close together. So the ranking isn't really that relevant. P.O. The OG 4th half. The first 4th half where there is no other 4th half existing. We need to thanks for her existence. For providing a nice synergy to use for all 4th half characters. P.O. picked it for over a year and a half as a magical support and debuffer. But K.O.G decided to nerf her. However, she's still a qualified magical support. And she has decent damage as well. And I'm talking about DPS tier damage. Overall, she's a fun class to play with in this meta. SU I love, love, love the theme of Japanese Yam Yangxi. Her lore is pretty straightforward. Gaining a will the power from the spirits and to help all the lost souls. Her in-game performance is nice, with decent party buffs, long-lasting healing, and decent damage for support. However, Kyoji recently nerfed her healing duration into half, but that doesn't stop her popularity as a healer, since Ara is Ara. Always have a strong fan base. GS, the first Kickstarter of this fourth half project. In the lore, he is controlled by the will of L and stealing RI's shop. His in-game performance was insane up on release, with crazy damage that made every DPS class envious. He set the bar high for hives towards all the other upcoming 4 paths. Well, he didn't escape from the KOG nerf gun later on. But GS is still a meta DPS now. RV I'm so glad that RV is getting more and more attention and present in game now. His lore isn't very fascinating. He discovered a new power from Toxic Seed and slowly intoxicating himself with the great power he gained. The closer to death, the stronger he gets. His design also gives me the Venom vibe. Then the in-game performance of his is very nice. A decent debuffer. Decent damage and clear as a sub-damage class. Performing wells and all raids in dungeons. Making Raven more user-friendly in general. Great class. Now we come down to 6. TP. The ultimate kids that won her own roles. It's a path where Lobby truly find her happiness with Nisha. The true happy ending path for them. In game wise, she is an all out DPS class in the meta. Doing all kind of crazy damage, fill your screen with missiles and bombs. Is a very very playful class. Well, she also got some nerf over the past few patches. But that doesn't stop them from being the meta and popular. Fifth. BG, or OP now. He's the newest path of Ain that just arrived in NA a few days ago. He somehow got his name changed up on release. No idea why. In lore, he's lost in connection between him and the goddess, and trying so hard to reconnect in a twisted way. A too long to read version would be that he is like the kid who doesn't have signal on his phone, and threatened his mom by saying, If you're not picking up the phone, I'm gonna burn down the place! <laughs> Basically it. In game, he's quite fun with the little balance system he has for self buffing. He's a qualified as sub damage dealer with party buffs. But his mana is an issue. We'll dive into that later on on the upcoming AIM video. Overall, he's a well designed character. Fourth, DM. Lou loses all of the emotion from the second contract to save CL in this path. To be honest, I didn't expect them to be a support class from the teaser. But they end up not just an ordinary support, but the most new player friendly healer in the meta now. They have many decent party buffs. But most importantly, they are the healer that doesn't scale with CP. If you are new to support role and want to learn how to be one, make a DM already. I can see why are they so popular. Finally, the top 3. They are standing really close. So, let's go with 3rd place. DA, the Angelic Healer. The design is really caught my eye with those angel wings. In this path, Chang utilized the Guardian Stone and Water Element power to protect his country and his people. He's not just a Guardian anymore, but a beacon of hope of his people. In game wise, he has incredible mobility, decent utility buffs, and healing for team. But most importantly, 
His damage dealing is already on par with sub damage dealing classes. I'm surprised that KOG make his class a healer sub damage dealer. And with his support and damage, I wouldn't be surprised if the popularity of his is sitting on the top 5 of all 56 classes now. CA Oh my Eve. In CA lore, Eve discovers a hacker code within her core. She uses the corrupted power and eliminating who's opposed her. The queen is slaying. As a second class release in the 4 pack project, CA certainly lived up to the hype generated by Genesis. I remember seeing all those screenshots with player using FOG weapon to out damage many other class in raids. This drew both love and hate from the community. But as you know, she got heavily nerfed not long after her peak. But she still remains the queen on her throne, and one of the meta physical DPS class. Finally, the first place, Noah, MO. I am a bit surprised that despite this class not yet being available in NA, it's already being claimed at the first place. I guess you all just love pure DPS classes, don't you? I would say that MO lore is the best among all four paths. I literally got chills after reading it. That's why I made a brief translation on my channel and Discord. So feel free to check it out. But too long to read, Noah is traumatized by the thousands of failures from his memory travel journey in trying to save his friend, Claimer. He slowly begins to mistaking that Claimer as his brother and Ebolin is the one who murdered Claimer. Now, he's building a new world with his newfound brother and his twisted powers. This plot is so good. And in terms of gameplay, I cannot say too much since I haven't really played him. But I've heard he does decent meta tier damage. But I just love his design. It's really nice. A dark color theme with transformance into red and white. And the theme is inspired by Morbius and vampires. Okay, I can't wait to try him out. So, did you guess correctly or do you have different ranking or placement? Before we wrapping up this video, let's check out some comments from our community of this event. Tailcrafter says he loves both OM and BG. Surely a sucker for the lore and design of both classes. And he loves all the 4 5 lores in general. Well well well, I'm 100% agree with you. The lore of 4 path is such a nice touch up. Mr. Jackknife sure loves the support classes. Why we here is saying time flies. The Quatuor has come to the end already. Eternal Abyss and friends also love the DPS classes of the 4 path. Well, thank you friends! I love this active community. Hope you guys will join the next event as well. Share your ultimate top favorite 4 path in the comment section below. And don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to stay up to date with the latest updates. I will see you all in the next character reveal video very very soon. So stay tuned!